How you doing? This is Coach Carl. Today we're going to be talking about Neville Goddard's The Four Mighty Ones and how it applies to you today. I get a lot of questions pertaining to The Four Mighty Ones and people want to know, how does this teaching apply to me today? And they don't realize how relevant Neville is today. So we're going to talk about The Four Mighty Ones. What we'll discover in The Four Mighty Ones is the first one is the producer. The producer suggests the theme. What is the theme? Now, many of you would wonder, well, what does the theme have to do with my life? The theme is this. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I had more money? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I had a loving relationship? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I was in better health? That's your theme. What is it that you want? That puts you in the place of the producer. When you're operating from the mindset of the producer, you ask yourself, what is it that I want? And then you make a statement such as, wouldn't it be wonderful if I had whatever it is that you want? And what is the limitations of whatever it is that you want? In scripture, we're told that whatsoever is the limit. So basically what we discover is that the limit is limitless. Whatever it is that you can imagine, when you begin to say, wouldn't it be wonderful if I hit the lottery? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I lost weight? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Whatever that thing is that you want to do, ask yourself, wouldn't it be wonderful if? Then we move on to the author. The role of the author is this. You notice that I have light next to the author. Light stands for living in the end. So once you've established, wouldn't it be wonderful if I had a loving relationship, for example? Then you begin living in the end of your loving relationship. Years before I was married, one of the things that I would do is I wore a wedding band even before I was married. And a young lady inquired with me, De Carlo, wouldn't that chase off a woman from being interested in you if she saw the wedding band? I said, no, the right woman would know by way of conversation that, of course, I wasn't married. The question arises, what is it that you want? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I was in a loving relationship? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I had more money? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I was in my ideal house? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could relocate to another country? Whatever that thing is that you desire, begin living in the end. As you see here, light. Begin living in the end after you establish, wouldn't it be wonderful? You begin exercising your script, as it were, by living in your ideal end. Ask yourself, what would it be like living in my ideal state, whatever that state is. The next stage in the Four Mighty Ones is the director. The role of the director is to direct one's thinking. Ms. Linda will often say that the reason why we're here is to learn to control our thinking or to direct our thinking. We've been told by scripture that we have been given dominion, but that dominion comes by way of one's controlled thinking. As you think, you are. What is it that you're giving your attention to? Now, when we start looking at controlling one's thinking, this is probably the hardest part when we're talking about the four mighty ones. Why? Because so often we've allowed our thinking to go astray. Our thinking happens haphazardly. And because we have no control over our thinking, it's hard to stay focused on, wouldn't it be wonderful if I was in a loving relationship? Because what we begin to focus on is the relationship that we have, whether it be no relationship or bad relationship. So it's very difficult for us to control our thinking and to focus on a loving relationship. As a result, we continue to reproduce our old relationships. Controlled attention is the act of controlling one's thinking. We're given to do so. We can focus on good, bad, or indifferent. 
So we can focus on the good. The problem is because we haven't exercised the muscle of our imagination, many of us have so little control over our thinking. As you begin exercising the muscle of your imagination, and as you begin controlling your thinking, as you begin living in your desired end, what you're going to discover is you're going to begin manifesting more of what it is you desire to manifest in your life. Of course, on the contrary, when you fail to control your thinking, you're going to be one of those that say, this stuff doesn't work. You know, this is a bunch of hoopla. These guys are fakes, phonies, and you can't believe them. And the truth of the matter, all of that's going to be true because it's going to be unto you according to your faith. Henry Ford said it this way, if you believe that you can do a thing, or if you believe that you can't, you're correct in either case. What is it that you're hoping for, creators? What is it that you're desiring? What is it that you want to create in your life at this moment? Then begin directing your thoughts, your thinking, on that thing that you desire. Some of you have reached out to me and said, Coach, I've been doing this thing for a month, three months, and I'm not getting the results. The second you say that, you're undoing the results that you may have had. It's like sowing seeds in the ground, digging them up to see if they're growing. When you begin planting the seeds of your desired end, when you begin living in that end, you have to be committed to that change. You have to be committed to either you change your desire or to the fulfillment of that desired end. And I think that in part, when we talk about living from one's desired end, lifestyle follows one's beliefs. If you say that this is your desired end, then you have to begin living from that state. And we'll talk more about that in the next stage of the four mighty ones. But you have to begin living as if, thinking as if, feeling as if, occupying the state of the thing that you desire. Many of us believe that the only thing that we need to do is get into a state akin to sleep prior to going to bed and voila, everything else is done. And of course, 23 hours of the day, we're focused on negativity. And then we say, of course, this stuff doesn't work. The stuff is always working. And remember this, that God always answers with a yes. I like using the acronym YES, Y-E-S. Y stands for yes, immediately. E stands for yes, eventually. Not now, but later. And the S in the Y-E-S acronym stands for something better. Often we're trying to manifest something, but our higher self realizes that there's a greater good for us to be manifested. We may have our eyes set on a specific partner, and for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work out. But then we encounter somebody so much better than what we could ask, think, and or imagine. Some of us say, well, I want to hit the lottery. But then we learn the skill sets to make a million dollars. When you learn the skill sets to make a million dollars, you have your own lottery machine. You can create money anytime you want. Some of us look at health and we say, well, I want to manifest better health. All of a sudden, a cure, a medication, something else comes out that helps us in our desire to have better health. Just because it doesn't come the way that we think that it should doesn't make it any less a miracle. You have to be open to the something better. So again, that YES acronym, yes, eventually, or something better. Let's move forward. The next role in the four mighty ones is the actor. And the actor is probably one of the most important roles that you'll play. You notice here that I have the mental enactment. When we're talking about the mental enactment, this is you living in your mind's eye as if you already have that thing that you desire. We like to call this acting as if, make believe, pretend, whatever you call that, it doesn't matter. But you begin playing the role, you become the actor in your screenplay, in your movie, you begin living out from your imagination, 
And what's going to happen as you live it out in your imagination, it's going to be expressed in what we call the 3D or reality. You begin thinking, acting, and speaking as if you already have that thing you desire. Neville will often say, you begin to act as if you are already the person you want to be, do, and have. Now, why do I add those others? Sometimes it's something that we want. Sometimes it's something we want to do. It may be a new opportunity, a new job. Sometimes it's something that we want to have, a Rolex watch, a new house, a boat, whatever that thing is. We have to begin living as if we're the person being, doing, and having that which we want to be, do, and have. As you begin playing out these roles consciously, and I stress consciously because we're all playing the roles and sometimes not necessarily in order, but unfortunately playing reverse roles. We're playing roles that we don't want to play. You know, often we awake and we say, this could not be my life. Something's wrong. I'm doing all the things right, and yet I'm not manifesting the thing that I desire. Well, start with the four mighty ones. Start looking at your life from the mindset of the producer. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I had more money? Just start there. See it as something being possible. Then become the author of your own story. Step into the light. Living in the end. As you begin living in the end in your imagination, as you begin picturing that end being possible, and you begin to emotionalize it, as you begin to sensationalize it, as you begin to affirm it, as you begin living in that end, that end's going to be drawn towards you. That thing that you desire also desires you. As the director, you begin controlling your attention. As you begin directing and controlling your attention, you're going to learn how to manifest multiple things in your life by merely being able to control your thoughts, your self-talk, your feelings, your emotions. As you begin to become a better director of those aspects of your life, you're going to be able to begin to say what it is that you desire and then be able to create it. And lastly, being the actor in your play, you're going to be able to speak think, and act according to what it is that you desire. You're going to begin living out the principles. You're going to become the actor in your own play, and everyone else is just going to be extras. And as you begin controlling your thinking, as you begin to direct your thoughts, as you begin doing these things on a daily basis, what you're going to find is that you begin to manifest the life that you desire. Now, understand this, creators, just because it may take a little time before reality to catch up with what it is that you've done by way of your four mighty ones doesn't make them any less. You have to begin living them out until reality catches up with you. This can't be something you do part time and then when it seemingly isn't working, you give up. This has to become a lifestyle for you if you are to believe it true. But remember this, creators that only you can create your perfect world, not God or man. Only you can create your perfect world. This is Coach Carlos saying have a great and abundant day.